to an Aquaman. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking the channel and checking me out again. If you're new to the channel and you've never seen this face before, I want to thank you for clicking on this video and checking out my content. Feel free to go ahead and check out the rest of my content. That's after you finish watching this video. And also, consider subscribing to my channel. See, on this channel, I make content on how to bridge the gap between continental Africans and the African-American diaspora, especially African-Americans here in the United States of America. So on today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the hidden truths about Ghana, okay? And all African-Americans should know this. All Black people in America should know this. As a matter of fact, all Black people anywhere in Europe or anyone that's considering moving to Ghana, uh, you, you gotta know this because these are the things about Ghana that you have to know. Now, Ghana is, is a great place to live. I mean, it, it's a great place. It has its challenges because it's considered a developing country. A lot of people would say third world, but I don't, I don't like to use that terminology because I mean, really, well, so what's the second world? If, if the West is the first world, what's the second world? And, and why do they call Africa the third world? I mean, it's just one globe, right? Okay, but let me get off that dot track. That's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about the, the hidden truths about Ghana, okay, that you've got to know before you even consider moving to Ghana. Now, I know it's in vogue these days because, you know, the year of the return that happened a couple of years ago, and, you know, a lot of Black folk from here in the West and Europe and, you know, the islands and, you know, some Southern American countries all travel to Ghana. You know how social media is. Everybody was posting, you know, the, the, the parties they were going to, you know, the events and all that. It made Ghana look great. And Ghana is great. OK, but that you you got to deal with the realities of Ghana. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. But listen, I'm getting a lot of new subscribers and a lot of followers on this channel. I want to thank you guys so much. You're so awesome for following me, for subscribing. Why do I want to tell you guys about the hidden truths about Ghana? OK, I love Ghana. You know, that's where I was born. You know, I wasn't raised in Ghana. I lived in Ghana for the first 12 years of my life. So I was raised a little bit in Ghana, but I've spent most of my life here in the United States. And I've been to Ghana quite a few times, you know, within the last 10, uh, 15 years. And, you know, there's certain things that I've seen about Ghana that I want to tell you that I, I want you to be aware. OK, so, you know, just sit back, and relax. And I'm going to tell you these are the things that you want to consider. Number one. So let's just say that you've actually have made that transition and you've moved to Ghana, okay? Now you've got your apartment, you've got your house, uh, you know, wherever you're staying at. There's going to be certain periods of the day or night that for, you know, for some reason or another, you're not going to have electricity, okay? The electricity is not dependable in Ghana, okay? It, there's actually a terminology for it that the local Ghanaians call it. Doom so, doom so, doom meaning to turn off, for example, a light, and so meaning to turn on. Okay, so they call it doom so. It's something that happens, it's been happening for years and years. The unfortunately, it seems like the, the electrical grid in Ghana is not dependable, you know, they so they turn it off for load balancing because all the different buildings and residences cannot handle the load that is put on the electrical grid in Ghana. So, you know, the, the government or the electricity uh, company, Ghana Electric, just happens to turn it up to be able to manage it. Okay, so these are some of the things that are happening. You know, I, I know that if you are a tourist and you visit Ghana, you might not see these because you, you're staying in a hotel or you might be staying in an Airbnb and this might not happen. And you might, because you're visiting, you're not going to be spending a lot of time in your hotel or in your Airbnb because you're going to be out and about. So you don't recognize these conditions. But for people that actually live in Ghana, this is something that you're going to have to deal with. So it's something that you're going to have to be prepared for. If you live here in the United States or in Europe or somewhere else that's more developed, this does not happen. So it's something that you're going to have to deal with. It's something that you got to prepare yourself for. Okay. And this can affect uh, your air conditioning because the air conditioning most likely runs on electricity. So if you stay living in a building 
it can get really, really hot and frustrating. Okay. So it's something that you got to prepare yourself mentally for. Number two, the roads, the roads, a lot of the roads in Ghana, especially, well, I can speak for a crop, okay? And which is probably where most of you guys, you tourists uh, are going to be at, yeah, unless you visit Kumasi or Cape Coast or somewhere else, but at least for a crop in the less developed areas, the, a lot of the roads are not tarred, okay? If you live, these are, you know, I'm just going over the hidden truths about Ghana. These are some of the things that, you know, people do not consider. So African-Americans, you know, my brothers and sisters, you all should know these, okay? So I'm just telling you the hidden truths about Ghana. Now, the roads, okay, the roads are not tarred, okay? There's going to be a lot of the roads that are, are you know, have potholes and, you know, there's, there's some areas that you go to and some neighborhoods, so you're going to see a, a large, just a, a really huge pothole. So, you know, if you're driving, you know, by the time you get to your destination, you're going to be really tired because, you you know, your your body is moving along with, uh, you know, it, you just go through a lot. Your body goes through a lot. There's going to be some areas that you're going to see some really huge dips in the road and don't let it rain, you know, especially when it rains. It's it's not a situation that you want to be in because if the roads get flooded and you might not be able to go from one end of a street to the other end because the car that you're driving in might not be able to make it through. I've seen where cars, taxis, and other, other types of vehicles have gotten stuck just because it's rained really hard. And that's just the condition of the road. So this is something else that a hidden truth that you 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 have to know these. You have to know these things if you're really considering making that move to Ghana. You already know I'm Ghanaian by birth. Okay. I've lived here in the United States a very long time, but I can't forget my childhood and I can't forget. I remember the experiences that I went through. Ghana is really hard. Okay. And I love my brothers and sisters dearly who are in Ghana. Okay, and I know that they're trying their best. Everybody's got to feed their family, and people in Ghana will do anything. I mean, I'm just gonna gonna keep it real. You can't trust everybody that you meet. Okay, not everybody that that you meet there will have the best of intentions for you, and this is true anywhere in the world. Okay, you know, you might go to Ghana thinking you know you're reconnecting with your ancestors. You know the the person that you meet is, you know, is, you know, really friendly with you and, and whatnot. And there's some people that are, are really, really mean well for you, but you're going to meet some folks just because you're a foreigner, you know, you're American and, you know, they might see just dollar signs on you anytime that they see you. Okay. And that's all they're thinking about. Okay. I'm going to, and I, I'll give you an example. You know, when I was a, a child, in elementary school in Ghana, I was about to graduate elementary school, and there was a there was a a test, like a, a standard test that all the kids in my class would have to take. So there was a teacher, uh, one of my teachers. Uh, it was a, a gentleman that was you know beloved by all the students. Uh, he was teaching a class that would help the students, his students, pass the uh, the the entrance exam to go to the next level. And this was something on the side that he was doing. So I guess it wasn't sanctioned by the school. And my aunt, you know, who I was living with at the time, she paid, you know, a good amount of money to this teacher to teach this class, to teach a whole bunch of students. And after a while, the man ran away with the money. He didn't, he didn't, you know, he didn't do what he had promised. And to this day, nobody knows what happened to that man. You know, he, he just stopped teaching the school. So the man just took the money and run. And this, these are the different types of things that happen in, in Ghana because it's, it's really difficult. It can be really difficult in, in Ghana. You know, conditions are not the way that it should be. Number four, customer service. Let me say it again, customer service. Now with this one, you, I don't know, maybe you might've heard about it. You know, for, for folks who have been to Ghana, I know you've been to a restaurant or something like that, and you might have been standing around waiting. You know, am I going to get seated? Look, 
people in Ghana, that's just not a thing that folks in Ghana think about. You know, customer service is not is not something that really people focus on. Okay. If you live here in the United States, I know you, you know, you're used to if you go somewhere, go out to a restaurant, you know, they they at least try to seat you or they at least let you know, you know, we we have a table coming up in, you know, 10, 15 minutes. It's not like that in Ghana. No. I mean, it, you might even be eating your food and they're not gonna check on you. You know, you gotta you gotta actually find the waitress or the waiter. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's just how it is. I mean, I remember a story, uh, you know, a few years back when I was uh, at my aunt's house, and you know, my cousins and I were waiting for the internet had gone down. So, you know, we had called the uh, the, the cable company or you know the internet company to send a repairman to come out, and he was supposed to be there at a certain time. He didn't show up until four hours later, and his excuse was that he had something came up with his family. And that's just normal to people. It is normal and people accept it. So it, you know, it keeps the, that type of situation keeps repeating itself. It's like something that's, that's standard. So, you know, these are the things that you have to deal with because I know here, at least I know that if I request somebody to come fix my internet, I'm expecting them to be at to be there at a certain time within the, the two hour time frame because I might have something else to do after they after their repairman leaves. And if they don't show up at a certain time, I'm gonna be pissed. You know, so yeah, the and so and the thing about in Ghana, it's like there's no recourse of action if something somebody does something to you, even if it's if it's some something that's a crime. It's like the police departments are not really equipped to handle it. <laughs> it. It's just, yeah. So these are the hidden truths about if you're considering moving to Ghana. Last but not the least, number five, the cost of housing. Not just the cost of housing, but how difficult it can be to actually find good, reliable housing, okay? So in Ghana, it's a little bit different. Okay, so here in the United States, if you're looking for a house, and you can obviously look online, and then you, know, you can find your realtor who's going to show you some properties. And then if you, you, know, you find the property, you, know, you obviously got to go through the financial aspect of it. But in Ghana, it's a little bit different. You know, you, you're dealing with, you, you can be dealing with multiple people because you've got the owner, and then sometimes you've got, a, you've got an agent you know, who's actually showing you the property. And a lot of times you, you might have to actually pay the agent. <laughs> you got to pay the agent to show you the property, okay? And then also there might be a middle person, a middle man who might know the property owner. It can get really confusing and convoluted, but yeah, I have a, I have a friend who is, uh, you know, who's living in Ghana uh, right now, African-American lady who's living in Ghana. And you know, I'm gonna drop her her link up below. She's also a content creator that's uh, who's in Ghana right now. And um, you know, she uh, explains the whole process. She has a series on actually finding housing in Ghana that you can check out. Uh, I'm gonna drop the link below. And yeah, that's that's one thing. It, it's, it can get really frustrating because a lot of times <laughs> you're gonna have to pay for the agent to actually get to the property, pay their transportation and whatnot. So it's a, it's a whole lot of different things that you got to deal with, with when it comes to housing. So just beware, okay? What I always advise folks is before you actually make that decision to go to Ghana. You know, I know traveling to Ghana can get expensive, but you know, there's, there's ways to make it a little bit more affordable. But Travel there a few times, you know, if you want to go there two, three, four times, get to know the lay of the land, get to know the people, find some people you can trust, okay? Travel around, Accra is not the only place that you can live. Yes, it's the capital city, you know, it's a, it's an urban jungle of Ghana, but, you know, there's so many different places that, you know, there's uh, Ibri, there's Cape Coast, there's Kumasi, you know, some folks even like the North, Tamale, you know, where it's it's not as developed, but you might like it, okay? So 
take your time before you make that decision because it's really a huge decision. I mean, even for me, who's lived here in the United States my whole life, you know, I'm considering moving to Ghana at some point in the future because, you know, I can't spend my whole life here. It's not my home. You know, America has become my home, but, you know, Ghana is my, my birthplace, the land where I'm from. So where most of my family is. So take your time and make that decision because I don't want you to be disappointed. You go to Ghana and then end up having to move back here into America, you know, because a lot of Black folk are developing this romanticized notion of Ghana and it can be a great place to be, but it can also be very difficult. So if you reach the end of this video, I want to thank you so much for checking me out. Make sure that you click the link below. I'm going to uh, drop a link in my first video. And then you can also check out the rest of my content. My playlist link is going to be uh, in the uh, description box as well. But thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, thank you for sticking to the end of this video. If you've seen my other videos and you're not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button if you enjoyed the video. That really helps push this video out so it can help a lot of other people just like you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you click the notification bell. Thank you, and I'll catch you on the next video. It's your man, King Anand, and I'm out.